The simplest form of linear regression is finding a line that is going to minimize the sum of squared error between data points and that line. So we're going to adjust a couple values here, the slope and the intercept from our model to minimize that error. Let's go through five different methods in Python for doing this. I'm going to start with a couple package imports. You can also get the source data for this from this URL. And uh, I'll visit that at um, right now just to show it to you. So you can get um, it from ME575 webpage and then just come down to the activities and there's linear regression and nonlinear regression. I'm going to select linear regression and you can get the source code and follow along with this here if you just come down to source code. All right, let's go back here. Um, just go through this in a little bit more detail. You can run this um, in, you can run this in uh, the Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. And if you run load and then the URL load the data, or, uh, the script for you. Okay, so I'm gonna have NumPy, I'll have SciPy stats, I'll have Linregress is one of the packages I'm going to use and then also stats models and .api and I'll use matplotlib for plotting and then gecko as a final one. Okay, so these are some of the packages that I'm going to use. Now I have some data. There are my x values and my y values. Now you can see them over here on the plot. Those are the values, the black points. All right, I'm going to define a couple functions as well. We're going to calculate r squared um, I'll just make RSQ function, Y1 and Y2. It doesn't matter which one is your predicted Y and which one's your measured Y. You just need those two inputs. We have the residual, okay, and then the sum of squared uh, residuals, sum of squared, uh, let's see, SS total is the length times the variance of Y1. And then I have R squared is 1 minus SS resid divided by SS total. Okay, I'll return R squared. So that's one way to calculate R squared. Some of the packages also calculate that for you. Then I'm going to plot and create this plot right here um, just as we come up with the regression. Okay, there I see the uh, plot of the data and then I'll also have the slope and the intercept that I'm gonna parse out from here. A zero is gonna be the slope, A one is going to be the intercept. And then I'll just create an equation here on the chart okay, with the slope and intercept, and then I'll plot the line, do a grid, and then have a legend. Okay, now if you're not in Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook, you need to do the plt.show, but it doesn't hurt to have it here as well if you are in one of those environments. Okay, and I'll run this one as well just to define those functions. All right, now I want to start with the lin regress, scipy lin regress. I'll have my slope and intercept and my r value and my p value and standard error. I'll talk a little bit more about what some of these mean once we do the stats models. And I'll have lin regress with x and y. So pretty easy to use, but it returns many different things here, five different things. Okay, the two parameters, slope and intercept. This is the R value for R squared. Um, so let's go ahead and just create A with slope and intercept. And then I'll print the R squared value. All right, and then I'll plot. So let's just go ahead and run this one first, just so we can see the plot. So there's our linear regression with slope 0.2 and intercept negative 0.54. Now let's do another one. This is uh, NumPy. We're going to use polyfit for this. And polyfit is a, uh, is a this is going to be a polynomial, but if we use one, then it's going to be a first order or a linear fit. All right, so I'm going to print A, and then let's just go ahead and calculate Y fit. And I'll use polyval for it. 
put in your A value. These are the parameters that were calculated from PolyFit. And then the X values that you want to predict. And you can also calculate an R squared. So I'm going to use this function R squared because PolyFit doesn't have one of those uh, for you. So you have to calculate it yourself. So I'm going to use that function that we defined right here instead. All right, so there it is. And let's go ahead and just plot the result from PolyFit. And I get the same answer that I did before. Okay, the R squared value is the same as well. All right, let's go on to a linear algebra solution. So I'm gonna have to explain just a little bit about this. There's actually a, a matrix solution to the least squares problem for linear regression. And it starts because we have y equals, and then if I do mx, let me just do m times x plus b, okay, I can put that into a different form, which is y equals, and then I'm gonna put x and one here in matrix form. These are actually gonna be vectors, and then I'll put m, and B here. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll just solve for M and B by um, some matrix algebra. So that'll be listed here in these steps. So I start off with Y equals X times A. Now A are gonna be my slope and my intercept. And then I'm just going to do the transpose of X to each side. Okay, and so I'm doing the same thing to each side of the equation. It doesn't change the equation. And then I'm going to, okay, so let me do that in code. Okay, I'm just going to stack uh, x and 1s together. Okay, just like this right here. All right, and then um, matrix operations, I'll just call that xx, okay, and xty. I'll have X transpose and then X and Y. And then I'll do lin alg. Okay, so I'm going to solve this system of equations. I'll do X, X, and X, T, Y to solve for A. And I can also have the same solution with least squares. And that's just least squares, and I can just do X, Y. Okay, I don't have to do all of these matrix operations. And I'm going to put in the R C O N D equals none. Uh, that's just an extra option that gave me a warning if I didn't put it in there. Okay, I'm just going to take uh, the zeroth element, uh, the first element back from that. I don't want any of the reporting on the errors or anything like that. Okay, so there is our least square solution. Let me just, I'm going to, because I think this one was just a little bit confusing, I'm going to just show you. Um, continue right here. That was um, kind of made a big jump there on how to solve that. So let me just come over here and just show that to you. So if I do have x, uh, x transpose times y and then I have equals and then I do x, uh, x transpose Okay, x transpose times x times a. Okay, what I can do is I can multiply both sides by x transpose x and inverse. And if I do that, if I multiply both sides, this becomes just the identity matrix. Okay, because I've multiplied that by itself uh, with the inverse and then I just have to take that on the left side and that gives me the solution to A. Okay, so there, there it is. Um, there's a solution to that uh, linear algebra problem. Okay, but you don't have a lot of the statistics that come with it. There is a package in stats models that's very nice. It will give you a lot of the statistical measures that you're looking for to see if the linear regression is valid, if some of the assumptions like zero mean normally distributed um, and independent 
and uh, distributed uh, errors, uh, residuals. Also, those those are some of the assumptions that have to go into linear regression uh, for it to be a good model. Otherwise, if you those aren't valid, then you may need to select a different type of regression model. All right, so here I'm going to add, add a constant to x. This is just like I did before with the v stack. Okay, let me come back up here. Um, okay, so I put in uh, right here these ones. So instead of me doing it, I'm just using the convenient add constant. And if you want to uh, put it at the end, you can say prepend equals false. So it puts it at the very end instead of the very beginning. And then I'm going to have a model, and this is the ordinary least squares. This comes from the stats model package, and I'll have x uh, and y in those arguments, and then I'll do the dot fit as the method to fit the ordinary least squares model. Okay, now I'll have the y fit. Okay, I'm going to predict with those same x values. And then I'm going to get the parameters. All right, and then I'll print a model summary. So I'm just extracting the A values out of that model and then also printing the model summary. Okay, and then I'll plot it. Oh, and I didn't even run this one up above. Let me go ahead and finish this off. Okay, so there is the uh, NumPy linear algebra solution. A couple different ways of doing it. Okay, here's the stats models here. All right, so just a warning. Um, kurtosis test only valid for n greater than 20. We're going to continue anyway. And I'm going to make this just a little bit larger so you can see the full table without it wrapping. All right, so here's our dependent variable, our model, method. There's the time. And some of the things that are most important about this, we have the R squared and adjusted R squared. Those are going to be two important metrics that we want to look at. The other ones are when you come down here to your different coefficients. You have your x1. So there is the slope, and there is the intercept. But we also have standard error. We have a t-test. Okay, but this is one that's important right here. If this is below 0 0.05, it typically means that it's significant. So that you should include that factor in your regression model. So both x1 and the intercept are statistically significant according to this uh, p-value test. Uh, it should be below 0 0.05. And then here's your lower and upper limits on that coefficient. So the 95% confidence interval for that is between 0 0.131 and 0.265. And then also for the intercept, you see that um, there's still quite a wide range there. Um, for the confidence interval, so with more data points, that's going to shrink. The other thing that you can look at are, is like the condition number. Condition number will tell you if those coefficients are correlated. Uh, if you have a high condition number, it probably means you have too many inputs to your model, and you can reduce those. All right, uh, you can look at the skew and kurtosis as well. Kurtosis close to three means that uh, the you don't have really abnormal number of outliers. Okay, and skew is uh, the test of normally distributed. All right, so there's our result. So same as before, one of the nice things about stats models is it gives you this table, and at the link that I shared before, there's a complete description of all of these values in the table. But I'll cover those in the next video on multiple linear regression. Okay, let's go for gecko for constrained regression now. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. Let's say we had um, a constraint on that intercept, 0.54. We said that it had to be at least a value of negative 0.5. You know, we had some other type of information. We said that um, you know that needs to be constrained. So all of these other methods, they don't have constraints in them. The idea that you could take a linear regression but 
put uh, bounds on those coefficients and then regress the other coefficients given those bounds. Okay, so um, I'm going to have to do some plotting here. Okay, I'll just fill this in and then I'll do the um, regression. Okay, the constraint regression, but I'm going to have the constraint in there and I'll plot that uh, with the constraint and without the constraint. Okay, so let's do this in Gecko. I'm going to create a new Gecko model and I'll just say remote equals false so it just solves locally. And then I'll say the I mode equals two. This is a parameter regression mode for Gecko. Now I'm going to create new constants. Okay, these are going to be two of them. We have a slope and intercept. And I'm going to turn the status on for both of those so that the optimizer will adjust them. Now C1 lower. This is the intercept. I'm going to put a constraint on this. I'm going to say that it has to be at least negative 0.5 so a lower bound on C1. Now I'm gonna have the X data okay that's gonna be equal to uh, M parameter with input X and here's my Y data with the Y vector that I put in there. Now I'm also gonna have a predicted Y as well. Now that's gonna be a variable. I have an equation with my predicted Y is going to be, I put a double equal sign in there, equal to C0 times the X data plus C1. I put in my linear equation. But you can put in any nonlinear equation if you wanted to. I'll minimize the difference between the data and the predicted values and square it. Then I'll solve it, and I don't need to see the solver output. This should be a pretty easy problem to solve. Okay, now let me go ahead and parse out the C values. And I'm just going to parse out C value 0 and make a list with uh, C1 and C0. Then I'll print C. These are my constrained solutions. Okay, so it's going to solve it. And you can see that the solver picks something just slightly below. It's a numerical solution, so it's basically at point, negative 0.5. And there is the new slope. So let's just see how it did with that constraint. So here I have the least squared solution. That's the one that we've been watching before. And then the blue line, you can see that it goes to negative uh, 0.5. But then it adjusted the slope slightly to minimize the rest of the sum of squared errors. So there you can see that we've done a constrained linear regression. It has a new slope value to still minimize the sum of squared errors, but this one was uh, stuck at a constraint, which didn't necessarily have to be the case, but uh, the optimizer found the optimal solution was at negative 0.5. Okay, so that's it for this one. The next video is going to be on multiple linear regression.